my name is Esther and I'm a special needs teacher from Huddersfield. I'm here today to talk to you about my big sister Mary. Mary lived a life of fulfilment and of exploration and her existence was one of colour and of music and of many outdoor adventures. And I want to tell you about her because I think she is a wonderful example of just how enriched a life can be in spite of the complexities and the intricacies and the spanners in the spokes that can happen when you have PMLD. So I'm gonna sit in this den that I've created for myself. It's a space I know that Mary would have enjoyed being in, particularly if it was set up outside. And as I talk, you're gonna see some photos of Mary in action. Mary was born in April, 1983 and lived against all odds and expectations until March 2017, just a month before turning 34. For the most part of her life, Mary lived well and she enjoyed the rush of moving fast on a bike, the buzz of bobbing on the sea and the peace of a crackling campfire. And I'm going to come to some of Mary's various adventures in a moment or two, but I think it's important to say that these are not the only ways to be adventurous. Adventure can mean doing something unusual or exciting, and oftentimes we think of adventure as a risky endeavour. But you can have adventures in many different ways, through tastes and sights, and sounds and experiences. And for Mary, <clears throat> one such way was through music. Music was so important to her, and her musical choices in themselves were adventurous. Mary had a particularly eclectic mix, from Beethoven to Britney to 90s techno, with some medieval babes and Mongolian throat singing in there too, for good measure. Music would transport Mary to different worlds, and was an immediate way for her to live adventurously and with agency. It was never assumed that her musical tastes would be the same as others around her, and at times they really weren't, and a rich auditory menu was provided for her to make her choices from, and to maximise her sensory strength of hearing. Mary would enjoy music most of all when it was performed live, when the vibrations would make their way into her bones and her being, and the sounds would envelop her, and when the reactions of the audience around her would be every bit as enthralling as the performances themselves. Another big source of joy in Mary's life was being outdoors, and Mary loved to cycle. She was able to do this with a wheelchair bicycle called a duet, and it was on a family holiday to the Netherlands that Mary was first able to cycle in one of these wheelchair tandems. And then having had and thoroughly enjoyed this experience, there was no turning back. So once home, fundraising efforts began and eventually a duet was bought for use by the local community. Often Mary would enjoy a leisurely cycle along the towpath of the canal, just near our house. But she completed some longer trips too, including cycling from Leatherhead in Surrey to Le Mans in France, as part of a fundraising event for seeability. It was the change in speed on a bike that Mary seemed to enjoy most, and I have clear memories of her eyes wide and exhilarated at going fast downhill with the wind in her face, and then, when the time comes to cycle up the other side, of Mary giggling at the steady and repetitive slow lurching and accompanying huffing and puffing of her pedal partner panting up the next hill. We would spend a lot of time near the sea, being in it and on it, next to it, and Mary was able to join in with the best bits of this, thanks in part to an amazing, bespoke, multiple zipped wetsuit. So Mary had this uncanny ability to bring just the right people in towards her and make just the right things happen for her. And a local surf shop had heard about Mary and her adventures and they offered to make an accessible wetsuit that she could get in and out of more easily. And this meant that she could dip more than just her toes in the water on our many trips to the sea 
and enabled her to stay warm enough to bounce around in a dinghy in the waves and play in the surf. Mary would go on lots of camping trips with family and friends and her transport doubled up as a camper van. And so after sharing food and drink and laughter around the campfire or music late into the night at a festival, Mary would be able to sleep in her van, cocooned inside two army surplus sleeping bags to stay warm. We would go on walks uh, off the beaten track quite often and Mary would use a wheelchair called a rough rider. And when I've come to describe it now, it sounds really quite rustic, but it was, it was a golden ticket to adventure. There were no wheels at the front and large mountain bike type wheels at the back and it would be tipped back slightly in order to negotiate obstacles, a little bit like a reverse wheelbarrow. And with straps attached to the front and the will and strength from some family and friends and Mary herself, there really was little terrain that she couldn't handle. It's really worth saying that Mary was able to safely and comfortably enjoy rides in the duet, walks in the Rough Rider and trips out in a canoe with the help of a Burnett vacuum moulded seating system that was transferable between bike and boat and chair. And it meant that she could take part in, in these different activities with a supported position and posture, which is so important. Thinking back about Mary and, and her love of such exciting activities, I wonder if a large part of the appeal to her of this was having the opportunity to experience big movement. When your own bodily movements are restricted because of your physicality, the need to experience movement can, can be left unmet. And then when it happens, it's all the more powerful. For all of us, regardless of our sensory or physical or neurological differences, we all have a need to move and to push our bodies in one way or another. And for some people, they seek out the extreme, hang gliding, marathon running, surfing. But for others, dancing in the kitchen, doing yoga, even drumming fingers and time to music fulfills that need. Because of course it has to be said that not everyone is a fan of adrenaline filled experiences, but lots of people are. And I think that we need to consider that many people with PMLD may also have these desires in their makeup. It's also worth considering that friends and family, pupils and those we support with PMLD have been through some very tough and demanding experiences in their lives, often even before they were born. And perhaps we owe it to them to assume their ability to handle a little bit more. They're tough. Mary would process things at a different rate to those cognitively typical around her. She lived at a different pace. Her experience of the world could be, could be in contrast to others. And sometimes that mismatch could create distance. Now, of course, this distance is navigable and that's partly what this whole wonderful conference is about. How can we travel that distance by being tuned into one another, by developing deep wisdom of one another's ways, perhaps through skillful interaction and through appropriate and accessible opportunities. But for Mary, a really compelling way to travel this distance was by being united in an exciting experience with someone else. Mary seemed able to process her experiences of movement, bumping over cobbles or rolling over waves, with much greater immediacy, to the point where both Mary and whoever she was sharing the experience with would respond in real time and with synchronicity. Did you feel that lurch as we went over the wave? Me too! Here we are, experiencing the same thing at the same time in this very moment and wasn't it incredible for Mary that connection and communication can happen at the deepest levels through adventurous experiences there are a number of amazing organizations and groups that provide adventurous opportunities for people with disabilities such as the Calvert Trust Camp Jojo experience community, 
the Bendrig Trust, Surfability, the Inclusive Cycling Network, and I can give a list of, of these places as, as in, in the handout. But I also want to emphasise that adventuring takes many forms and it's not always possible or desirable to be chasing adrenaline-filled adventures. And for Mary, towards the end of her life, her physical and medical needs required adventures of a different sort. They may have become more physically gentle, but no less exciting and meaningful. And this was often through immersion in the sights and sounds of nature, usually in woodland that would provide ever-changing seasonal sensory experiences. I think it's also worth saying that outdoor adventure can happen anywhere. You don't need to go far. It can be as simple as wrapping up warm, taking a brolly, a space blanket or a waterproof wheelchair cover and heading out in whatever weather is on offer that day. And if you want more immersion, you can buy emergency shelters fairly cheaply these days and they work like a mushroomed parachute that once inside give immediate warmth and shelter from the elements, as well as an otherworldly orange glow and a very different soundscape. The sound of rain amplified on a waterproof wheelchair cover, the musty smell of a tent or shelter are all exciting and valuable experiences wherever you have them and however brief. And if they're on your very own doorstep, if things aren't working out, you're home in an instant. If home is somewhere you'd rather be, then adventures can take place through story. It's famously known that books will transport you to wherever and whatever worlds you want to explore. And sensory stories, where the experiences to accompany the text are as important as the text itself, are a really powerful way of doing that too. As adventures in their own right, but also as ways to build up gradually to new experiences. There are a great deal of varied, high-quality sensory stories available now on an adventurous range of topics, from escaping a tsunami to getting a tattoo. And on the days that Mary would rather have had an armchair adventure, I think she really would have loved them. In honour of Mary's life, a fund has been created which rewards grants to people in Devon and Somerset with physical and or learning disabilities in order that they can access music therapy, musical experiences or outdoor adventures. Mary's Beat has so far awarded over £12,000 to 23 people to support the cost of specialised bikes and wheelchairs, football tickets, equine therapy or membership to Specialist Sailing Club. And we're always looking for fundraisers and, and for applicants to the fund. And if you'd like to find out more, you can go to somersetcf.org.uk forward slash Mary's Beat. Thank you so much for listening to Mary's story today. Um, I hope you'll agree with me when I say that she was a truly incredible woman with so very much to say about adventuring in every sense. And I feel really lucky that I've had the opportunity to share some of that with you today. So goodbye and happy adventuring.